There's been so much talk here about deposit betas and the balance between that rise in interest rates and sort of what it means for a bank like yours. What gave you the confidence to bump up that net interest income target? Yeah, well, first, uh, remaining, Katie, thanks uh, Thanks for having me again. You know, what, what you saw in the quarter, um, again, is just, you know, good continued strong performance there. And what we were looking at throughout the first half of the year is the, is what was going to happen with deposit balances, what was going to happen with the mix of non-interest bearing or interest bearing, and what was going to happen with pricing, really driven by, you know, what was happening in the competitive environment. And as we got more, as more time went by, we got more confident that uh, trends were going to be a little bit better than what we had modeled uh, earlier. Earlier in the year, and that's why we were confident to put out, you know, the higher, uh, the higher uh, guide uh, today. And, and I think it's a good sign overall that you know it's a, what's happening in the economy is probably better than what we all expected. And you know, you see you see good activity uh, in in the market. You see you know our, our our NII is up quite a bit. You see fees up driven by that activity. Mm -hmm. uh, you see good controlled expenses in the quarter, and I think that's really what's what's driving I think our results today. Uh, interesting too, uh, taking a look at uh, trading revenue and fee revenue, not something at least relative to some of your peers that a lot of people look to Wells Fargo to dominate here, but there was significant outperformance there, uh, at least relative to what we heard uh, today out of Citigroup and J.P. Morgan. What was the driver of that? Yeah, and keep in mind we're we're relatively small, you know, re, you know, g you know, compared to some of the you know the big peers out there. But but it's something that we've been focusing on now for the last uh, couple of years, few years, uh, and just really making sure that we're consistently uh, adding the right people. We we're investing in technology, and really the focus is to just support our our clients better. You know, it's our U. It's focused on the U.S. based clients for the most part. Uh, there's some outside the U.S., but really primarily here in the U.S. And it's just supporting our corporate clients. And our, our, uh, our asset management clients and others uh, just better and better each day incrementally. Uh, and so we're happy with the performance we had this quarter and, and last quarter. Uh, and I think that shows through the fees. But, but it's something that we'll just keep you know, gradually building on over time. Mike, let's talk about commercial real estate because it caught a lot of eyes that uh, actually Wells Fargo increased the allowance for credit losses by about $950 million, and it was commercial real estate office loans that were cited for the reason behind the move. So as I understand it, you haven't seen significant losses yet, but you had CEO Charlie Sharp say that you expect to see it play out in the market over time. When are you anticipating to see peak pain for commercial real estate? Well, I, I think I would just broaden it a little bit first, and I'll come back to office. And, and you know, when you look at the overall credit picture, it's quite good. You know, on the consumer side, we're seeing a little bit higher charge-offs, but, but, but that's off historic lows. And so, you know, that's actually performing quite well so far. And broadly, on the commercial side of the business, it's it's going quite well in terms of both the you know our, our middle market and commercial banking clients, and big chunks of the commercial real estate portfolio are actually performing really uh, really well so far, particularly given where we. Are in the cycle, and so really, this this uh, conversation is focused and isolated on the office portfolio. Um, and I think as you look at office, you know, it, it's a lot of the trends that we all are talking about now for a while in terms of return to office. Uh, you know, companies needing less real estate, and that's starting to come through in different cities and different properties across the country. Um, and what we did uh, today, or, you know, or in the quarter, is is make sure as we sort of look at all the things that we can see and all, and then. Think about a whole bunch of different scenarios uh, uh, that we stress in the portfolio, and 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 so we built a reserve that we think is appropriate to deal with a number of those uh, scenarios. But it, but keep in mind, you know, we haven't, as you said, we haven't really seen the the losses uh, be significant so far. But there will be some weakness over time, and it will it will play out over an extended period of time, and likely years, not months or quarters, um, as people work through uh, the the changing patterns and and different issues with individual properties. So likely years, we'll uh, put a pin in that. Let's also talk about deposit betas as well, because you also said that the average deposit cost is now 1.13%. For context, it was basically zero a year ago. How much higher could that average cost rise? Well, keep in mind that's you know a little over 100 basis points with rates going up 500 basis points, right? And so it's still you know relatively modest given the the quick pace of right rates that we saw. 
And when you when you look at each part of the portfolio and the commercial side, you know the pricing's been pretty competitive for a number of quarters now. We're not seeing that accelerate one way or the other, um, and so I would anticipate that'll just continue being pretty competitive as we go over the next coming quarters. And then it's really the consumer side where uh, where we we raised prices last year, and we we're seeing that flow through uh, our uh, our portfolios today. Um, and I think we'll just have to wait and see as as the the year goes on, and we see what the path of rates look like, and uh, and I think that'll help us figure out exactly where that goes and what pace it increases or decreases uh, over over the coming quarters.